Why Venezuela is preparing to conquer Guyana. Venezuela claims two-thirds of Guyana in a controversial referendum, ignoring its neighbor and all while sparking international fear of a land grab. On December 3, 2023, Venezuela held a vote about annexing Guyana's Essequibo region, a massive territory nearly the size of Florida. Guyanese weren't allowed to participate, fueling accusations of aggression. Despite doubts about voter turnout, Venezuela claims a stunning 95% approval and plans to absorb the land, creating a new Guyana Essequiba state. This audacious move threatens to escalate into a major conflict. But why is it all happening? Let's get into the complex history of the dispute, unpack the referendum's legitimacy, and explore the potential consequences of Venezuela's bold claim. So, stay tuned till the end to understand this potentially explosive situation at the heart of South America. On December 5th, Venezuela's leader, Nicolas Maduro, said over 10.1 million voted in the referendum and 95% wanted the takeover, creating a new state called Guiana Esba. But others, like international observers, think only 2.4 million voted. Still, Maduro said the result is clear and Venezuela must follow it. He quickly made a new map, showing the taken land to be shown everywhere in the country. And more recently, Venezuela's leader appointed a military general to govern a disputed area near Jaco. Troop movements and construction activities increased near the border. The government issued arrest warrants for opponents of the annexation referendum. The defense minister hinted at potential conflict with Guyana over the Essequibo, but emphasized it's not a war for now. Guyana rejected Venezuela's demands. The Essequibo region, mostly dense jungle with sparse population, makes invasion challenging. Venezuela offered citizenship, but the area lacks infrastructure, with only one road through Brazil. Although tensions rose as Brazil deployed troops to discourage Venezuelan use of a vital road, the US Air Force patrolled Guiana, signaling opposition. The situation led to a major geopolitical crisis, raising the risk of state-on-state -state warfare involving Venezuela, Guyana, Brazil, and the United States. The sudden tension is rooted in the global competition for energy resources, historical grievances, and potential trillions of dollars in oil wealth. Venezuela's Orinoco oil belt holds significant crude oil, and in 2015, ExxonMobil discovered massive offshore oil deposits in Guyana's exclusive economic zone. This find, the largest of the 21st century, transformed Guyana into a major oil player. ExxonMobil's consortium invested billions in developing offshore oil platforms. In 2023, Chevron bought out Hess Core Stake, making Guyana the world's fastest growing economy. Guyana's GDP per capita skyrocketed, rivaling developed nations, and it became a main oil exporter to Europe. OPEC, Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, sought Guyana's membership, but Guyana, for now, maintained independence. However, Venezuela, struggling with declining oil production, faces Guyana's rise as an oil giant next door. Venezuela's production has plummeted over decades due to a failure to diversify its economy and its historical reliance on oil revenues led to corruption and authoritarianism. In 1960, Venezuela, alongside Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq, and Kuwait, became a founding member of OPEC, Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries. They formed their state-owned oil company, Venezuela Petroleum Corporation, and increased taxes on foreign oil companies from 50% to 65%. The 1970s oil price boom, following the OPEC oil embargo, brought billions into Venezuela. In 1976, amidst the boom, Venezuela nationalized its oil industry, creating PDVSA. However, in the 1980s, the global oil price crashed, impacting Venezuela's undiversified government revenues. Inflation rose, but the government accumulated massive debts through aggressive spending. Notably, in 1986, Venezuela strategically purchased half of the American oil and gas company, Citgo, and later acquired the remaining half in 1990. This move aimed to secure refining capabilities for Venezuela's heavy and impure crude oil. American refineries along the Gulf Coast retooled to handle heavier crude oil, making them ideal partners for Venezuela. PDVSA's acquisition of Citgo enabled Venezuela to own vital refineries 
and controlled 10% of the U.S. domestic oil market. By 1997, Venezuela became America's top oil source, surpassing even Saudi Arabia. However, corruption plagued the Venezuelan government, with an estimated $100 billion embezzled between 1972 and 1997. By 1989, public debt reached $29 billion, prompting Venezuela to seek an IMF bailout. Austerity measures sparked deadly riots. In 1992, faced with unrest, Hugo Chavez attempted a coup, leading to his imprisonment until 1994. After his release, Chavez entered politics, winning the 1998 presidential election. He ran on a socialist platform, promising to distribute oil wealth more equitably, end corruption, and uplift the poor. High oil prices allowed Chavez to fulfill these promises, reducing poverty and gaining popularity. However, he also consolidated power, curbing press freedoms, abolishing term limits, and expanding control over the national oil industry. Chavez's actions, including seizing joint oil projects and firing experienced PDVSA employees, led to a decline in Venezuela's oil production. Additionally, Venezuela sold oil at subsidized rates to friendly nations like Cuba and Nicaragua, distancing itself from the United States and aligning with Russia and China. Chavez's Venezuela, in the early 2000s, purchased $20 billion worth of arms from Russia, including fighter jets, missile systems, and tanks. To pay for this, Venezuela granted Russia's state-owned oil company, Rosneft, a stake in its oil fields and took loans from Russia, using 49.9% of its ownership in Sitco in the United States as collateral. This realignment toward Russia led to a total arms embargo by the Bush administration in 2006. As oil production dwindled under Chavez, exports to the United States decreased. American refineries, initially absorbing Venezuelan crude, shifted to processing heavy Canadian crude from the Alberta oil sands. Despite Chavez's promises to diversify, Venezuela remained heavily reliant on oil, with 96% of export earnings and 45% of the government budget tied to oil revenues by 2013. After Chavez's death in 2013, Nicolas Maduro continued his policies. However, in 2014, global oil prices collapsed, exposing the vulnerability of Venezuela's oil-dependent economy, and Maduro failed to adapt, leading to a rapid economic collapse, protests, and increased repression due to which the United States imposed severe sanctions, exacerbating economic hardships. In 2018, Maduro claimed victory in a disputed and criticized election, leading to more international condemnation and sanctions. The economic situation worsened with hyperinflation, a worthless currency, and rising poverty rates. By 2021, Venezuela experienced one of the world's worst economic collapses, with a GDP loss of over 75%. Millions of Venezuelans became refugees, fleeing the economic turmoil and an increasingly authoritarian regime. Locked out from the U.S. financial system and facing sanctions, Venezuela struggled to export its oil and maintain production levels. By 2023, GDP had dropped to $92 billion, while the government's debt soared to over $147 billion, resulting in a debt-to-GDP ratio of 160%. In the worst turn of events, unemployment exceeded 35%, and the population declined to 26.5 million. Oil production plummeted to 700,000 barrels per day, making Venezuela the 10th largest OPEC producer. Simultaneously, neighboring Guyana experienced an oil boom, contributing to the irony of Venezuela's collapse. If Venezuela decides to invade the Essequibo region to enforce its claims, it could overpower Guyana due to its larger population and military forces. With over 26.5 million people, Venezuela significantly outnumbers Guyana's population of about 800,000. The Guyanese armed forces, consisting of around 4,000 soldiers, lack the resources to defend their 743 kilometers long border with Venezuela adequately. Venezuela's military strength includes 138,000 active duty personnel, 30,000 reservists, and an estimated 1.6 million paramilitary forces. Despite being outdated, Venezuela possesses fighter jets, tanks, artillery, and attack helicopters acquired from Russia over a decade ago. 
In a direct confrontation, Venezuela's military capabilities appear formidable compared to Guyana's limited forces and outdated weaponry. However, a Venezuelan invasion could lead to international intervention, particularly from the United States. The U.S. has strategic interests in Guyana, where major oil investments, primarily by ExxonMobil and Chevron, have been made since 2015. A Venezuelan seizure of the Essequibo region would jeopardize these investments, likely prompting the U.S. to assemble a coalition against Venezuela. Furthermore, Guyana's increasing oil production, set to triple in the next three years, is very important for global oil markets. The U.S. may intervene to secure access to this oil, reduce dependence on Russian oil, and mitigate inflationary pressures. A military response could involve protecting Guyana's offshore oil fields and potentially attempting to overthrow the Maduro regime. Maduro's decision to heighten tensions over the Essequibo issue in 2023 might be driven by domestic and international considerations. Domestically, he faces low approval ratings and potential unpopularity ahead of the 2024 presidential election. By rallying patriotic sentiment around the Essequibo dispute, Maduro could bolster support for his regime. Internationally, he may be seeking leverage in negotiations with the United States to secure sanctions relief for Venezuela's oil industry. This approach involves exploiting the distraction caused by ongoing conflicts in Ukraine, Israel, and potentially Taiwan, hoping to gain concessions from Washington without resorting to actual military action. Russia might find it beneficial if Venezuela engages in the Essequibo region. This could divert the U.S. attention from Ukraine, where support for providing arms is declining. A conflict in South America could draw American troops, creating another distraction. Disruptions in Guyana's oil production could lead to oil scarcity, benefiting Russia's oil sales and funding the Ukrainian conflict. Even if Venezuela succeeds without U.S. intervention, Concerns arise about mismanagement of Guyana's oil fields. Despite Venezuela's potential irrationality, historical examples suggest that rational decisions in territorial conflicts are subjective. Venezuela is likely to continue claiming the Essequibo region, requiring preparedness for potential escalation.